everyone this is dr naomi sonatis with the nurse maker here with another nclex review content for you guys um today i'm going to be talking about diuretics um diuretics is a class of medications that we use to remove fluids from your body um typically it is the first line drug of choice for hypertension so uh, you know hypertension has another name that you know the medical community goes by we call it the silent killer because a lot of people have high blood pressure and they're walking around and they don't know that they have high blood pressure and so um, unfortunately sometimes it's diagnosed when they have a stroke or something drastic happens to them and that's when they realize that they have high blood pressure so um, hypertension one of the first line drugs that we use to treat hypertension is diuretics and there's different types of diuretics so we're going to talk about that because um, it's very important as the nurse to know the nursing considerations that we have to look into when we are giving patients this medication so not just patients even you know family members a lot of people are taking diuretics to help control their blood pressure or it could be used for other things such as congestive heart failure, um, pulmonary edema, different medical conditions. So we're gonna go ahead and get started and talk about diuretics. So like I told you, um, hypertension, which means you have high blood pressure. Um, one of the first lines is giving you a diuretic. And when we give patients diuretics, um, we expect fluid loss okay so we expect um, for you to lose weight so one thing we want to do is do daily weights for our patients that are taking diuretics and for NCLEX purposes we like to tell you make sure that you use the same scale at the same time with the same clothes so that's why um, in the hospital patients are supposed to wear gowns um, instead of you know wearing pajamas and other things like that especially if they're on diuretics that way we know it's not like jeans versus they're wearing something light so everything weighs about the same so one of the major things or one of the things that let us know if you're holding on to water retaining water is um, checking your weight and should you have a weight gain of two to three pounds you need to notify the physician right away um, you know educate your patient to notify their doctor so they could know that they're holding on to fluid we also like to do intake and output that means what comes in we measure what you take in and we measure what you take out and so intake would be your fluid intake and then output would be um, you know how much mls or cc's you're voiding how much your urine output so um, also if we're giving a diuretic to monitor your blood pressure we want to make sure we check your blood pressure before we give you the medication because there are going to be some instances where your blood pressure may already be low and we would probably hold the diuretic before we give it to you so you want to make sure you uh, do vital signs before and then afterwards, you want to make sure you check their blood pressure to see if it was effective, if the blood pressure medicine worked, because sometimes patients need more than one medication to control their blood pressure. And sometimes they need more than one diuretic. And we're going to talk about, you know, how they have different diuretics and how they do different things. And um, sometimes they need different um, blood pressure classifications of medications, such as uh, ACE inhibitors or beta blockers, calcium channel blockers. So sometimes when patients have blood pressure and you're like, you're taking how many pills for your blood pressure? This is the reason why, because sometimes they need multiple things to keep the blood pressure under control. A major thing also is because you're getting rid of um, fluid. Sometimes depending on the type of diuretic, it affects your potassium level. Some diuretics decrease your potassium level where you may have hypokalemia and some diuretics 
um, increase your potassium level where you'll have hyperkalemia. So we need to keep an eye on your electrolytes, specifically potassium when you're dealing with diuretics. Also, um, sodium, you know, most of the time you're going to be on sodium restrictions when you have congestive heart failure or high blood pressure because um, the salt holds on to water and the whole goal of taking a diuretic is to get rid of the water. So a lot of the times we're going to tell you decrease your salt intake. Another thing we do is check your pulses um, just to see if your pulses are normal, if they're bounding, which you may have if somebody has um, high blood pressure, maybe their pulses are really strong because they have so much pressure in that vessel. Um, we're going to monitor for ischemic episodes because high blood pressure can lead to TIA, which is considered a mini stroke. Um, so that is one of the things we're going to look at, look out for. And then the complications of the four C's. Um, if you have high blood pressure, you are at risk for coronary artery disease. Okay. And that's basically um, saying high cholesterol. That's another word for that. Um, you're at risk for chronic renal failure. Okay. Your kidneys may shut down because of all the pressure you have going on in the vessels. Um, congestive heart failure is another complication of hypertension and then CVA, a cerebrovascular accident, which is a stroke. Those are all some of the complications that you may have with high blood pressure, not to mention, um, you know, like I said, strokes, you may have a headache. There's different things that come along with high blood pressure. Some people may even, you know, vision loss because of all the pressure they have going on. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the different diuretics because, again, these, this is the first line medication that we'd like to give for um, high blood pressure. But like I said, again, not just for high blood pressure, for other things as well. So there is a mnemonic for the different types of diuretics. Um, leak on the can is what we say. And... Um, the L stands for loop diuretic, which is most one of the most common diuretics you see out there, um, furosemide, okay, also known as Lasix. Um, the O stands for osmotic diuretics, mannitol is one of the ones we talk about. And then the T stands for thiazide or hydrochlorothiazide. And then the C stands for carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Um, so this one, we don't see as much as we see the first three and the next one after that, which is the aldosterone inhibitor, also known as spironolactone. Those are the four common ones that we see. Um, and the sodium channel blocker, it goes more with the aldosterone inhibitor because those are case sparing, potassium sparing. Meaning with those diuretics, it holds on to potassium. And so you're going to have hyperkalemia, high potassium level. But sometimes you will be taking one that gets rid of your potassium and one that holds on to your potassium. And so they kind of cancel each other out. So it's like one's going down and one's going up. And so we kind of meet in the middle and we cancel each other out. Okay, so the first diuretic that we're going to talk about is thiazide diuretic because usually when you are first diagnosed with high blood pressure, you know, um, if it's not too, too high, you know, the doctor may tell you um, we're, we're monitoring, make sure, you know, um, change your diet and do some exercise. But if diet and exercise is not working for you, then we will have to put you on a thiazide. Another name for a diuretic is a water pill because its job, again, is to get rid of the fluid. So thiazide, um, hydrochlorothiazide, HCTZ, commonly known. Um, we give that for multiple reasons. Again, we give that for hypertension. We give it for um, congestive heart failure. To take a hydrochlorothiazide or thiazide diuretic, um, you must have good renal function. So your GFR, your glomerular filtration rate should be above 15 to 20 mLs a minute, okay? So you gotta have good renal clearance. So 
the adverse effect of taking this medicine is it's going to lower your electrolytes okay it's going to lower your electrolytes um it's going to lower your potassium that's the main electrolyte that we talk about when we talk about diuretics so you're going to have hypokalemia so if you end up having hypokalemia we can tell you to eat foods high in potassium um, foods that are high in potassium are banana dried fruits um, avocado um, potato skins uh, citrus okay so those are some of the things we might tell you to take because your potassium level will go low so one thing you got to know is whether your potassium is low or high, um, if it's not in the range that it's supposed to be, which normal potassium is supposed to be 3.5 to 5.0, if it's not within that range, it may cause it may cause cardiac um, issues. So you may have EKG changes because you either have hypokalemia or hyperkalemia, okay? So we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna tell you if you're on a medication that's lowering your potassium, we're going to tell you to take uh, foods that is gonna increase your potassium, okay? Also, sometimes we can give you potassium supplements, okay? And we can give you a different um, diuretic, which is a case-bearing diuretic, again, that will cancel out the other one. So one will lower your potassium and the other one will increase your potassium, therefore balancing each other out and both of them are getting fluid off of you so it works even better for your blood pressure. Okay, so other things that di um, thiazide diuretics can cause is hyponatremia, hypomagnesium. Um, when we are giving diuretics, remember, always give your diuretics, tell your patients to take your diuretics in the morning because you don't want them getting up at night. Because when they take this medicine, trust me, they're going to the bathroom back and forth, back and forth. So you want to dose it in the morning so they're not getting up at night. Um, that is called nocturia. Also, you want to tell patients that are taking any high blood pressure medicine, medic medicines that are supposed to lower their blood pressure, that when they are getting up, to get up slowly, because oftentimes we get something called orthostatic hypotension. And orthostatic hypotension is when you get up from a laying position and you try to, you know, just get up and stand up and walk and you might start feeling dizzy and you might pass out. So we always tell you, um, you know, get up slowly you know if you were laying down get into a sitting position sit there for a few minutes before you decide to get up and walk okay and all right so this medicine is getting rid of fluid so you are going to be dehydrated okay you are going to be dehydrated so not you know we can't tell you to drink more fluid because you're going to be dehydrated dehydrated because the purpose of taking the medicine is to get rid of fluid so what i can tell you is increase your fruits and increase your fiber because when you're dehydrated it's going to make you constipated right so i will tell you to increase your fruits and increase your fiber so um so you can have a you know so you won't be constipated um, thiazide diuretics also cause photosensitivity so you want to tell your patients that if they're on this medicine to wear sunblock um, you know wear protect themselves from the sun um, make sure we monitor their blood pressure and then with thiazide diuretics it has a sulfa component in it so if you are allergic to sulfa or any medications that has sulfa such as bactrim then you need to avoid taking um, thiazide hydrochlorothiazide um, diuretics okay so interactions that i have on here is because of hypokalemia um, Digoxin, which is a medication that we take to help with your heart. Um, if you have low potassium, it can cause your DIG level to be elevated, and so it can cause DIG toxicity. And the thiazide diuretic, it's getting rid of the fluid, so it's also getting rid of the salt. Okay, so lithium, if you are on lithium, a medication we give for patients who have bipolar, if you are on lithium, 
um, you have to make sure you're getting enough salt in your diet because um, hyponatremia, low sodium, can cause lithium toxicity. And um, NSAIDs, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, um, can cause damage to your kidneys. And so we tell people, um, be careful using NSAIDs especially with the thiazide because it's your kidneys is the one that's working to, to, you know, cause you to void. So we don't really like you taking NSAIDs while you're taking um, diuretics because that's more taxing on your kidney. So again, this is hydrochlorothiazide. Um, so again, the upside of this medicine is it normalizes your blood pressure when used alone or in combination with other hypotensive meds. Um, so it's good for blood pressure, but the downside is it will cause hypokalemia, which is that low potassium, okay? And um, hyponatremia, low sodium, hypocholeremia, hypo, hyper urexemia that means your uric acid will be elevated so you got to be careful in patients who have gout okay and um also hyperglycemia be careful when you're taking diuretics because sometimes they can promote hyperglycemia and cause your blood sugar levels to increase because it's drying you up right so the next diuretic classification we're going to talk about is loop diuretics this is by far like one of my favorite ones um furosemide also known as lasix um and then we have teresemide and bumenonide also known as bumix and then there's ethersenic acid this type of diuretic works on the loop of henley okay um, it's not routinely the first line medication that we give for high blood pressure. Remember the thiazide, the hydrochlorothiazide is the one we would normally go with. But this is by far, this class of medication is by far the best class of um, diuretics. So if we have an emergency situation, this is going to be um, the medication that we are going to use first. Okay, so it is the most effective diuretic. And just like the other ones, you have to make sure you monitor the patient's potassium because this one um, depletes your potassium. So your potassium level will go down, okay? Um, this one is okay to use if your GFR is reduced. Um, we, we, you can give it PO or IV, PO meaning by mouth, or you can take IV, especially in emergency situations when we have pulmonary edema. Okay, the adverse effects are just like the same with thiazides. Um, with this medicine, you have to make sure if you're giving it IV to give it slowly because it can cause ototoxicity. Um, it can cause damage to your ear. So you gotta give it slowly. Um, and it also causes hyperglycemia like we just talked about with the thiazide, okay? So because it causes ototoxicity, make sure you try to avoid giving it with other medications that cause ototoxicity, such as vancomycin, which is a strong antibiotic, and aminoglycosides, which is a classification of antibiotics, such as gentamicin or tobramycin. Those medications cause ototoxicity as well. So we want to make sure that we avoid giving a loop diuretic with these medications. Okay, and so same thing, it, it's gonna cause um, hypotension. So you're gonna tell your patient to get up slowly, okay? Um, and, you know, it's gonna dehydrate you. So again, constipation. So eat foods such as fruits and foods that are high in potassium, those fruits, so banana, okay? Increase your fiber intake. So that is something I would tell you about the loop diuretic. So let's see what the funny man cartoon has to say about it. Furosemide known as Lasix. Hi Lasix here. Furosemide to some of you. I may look lazy, but I can hang around in your body for six hours. So when you take it orally, it starts to cause you to diuresis um, usually within 30 to 60 minutes after you take it. If we give it IV, 
And remember, you're giving it slowly. You start to diurese within two to five minutes, okay? Um, so again, this is a really good medication. It's gonna get that fluid off of you. Um, we use it for edema, congestive heart failure. We use it for hypertension. We use it for ascites, which, you know, if you have liver um, disease, you may have ascites. So we use um, furosemide. So again, it was by far one of the medications I gave a lot. I was a telemetry nurse for a long time. And so I knew this medicine like the back of my hand. Um, again, it's going to lower your blood pressure. It has photosensitivity as well. So when you go out there, make sure you're wearing sunblock and wear your hat. Um, it increases your blood glucose level and lowers your potassium. So next we're going to talk about um, case bearing. So remember in nursing, when we talk about electrolytes, um, the letter K stands for potassium. So this means I spare your potassium. This means we hold on to your potassium. So the last two we just talked about, thiazide diuretics and loop diuretics, they get rid of your potassium. However, K sparing is going to hold on to your potassium. So spironolactone is the medication that we normally talk about, but we also have those sodium channel blockers triamterene and amyloride, okay? Those are all case-sparing diuretics, okay? And so we may use that as an add-on to your loop or thiazide diuretic because those are getting rid, let me see, <laughs> getting rid of the potassium and the other one is increasing your potassium. So they kind of, you know, um, balance each other out, right? One is getting rid, one is um holding on so we kind of equal each other we balance each other out so um and we use it for hypertension edema swelling for hypokalemia when you have the low potassium we put that on to hold on to your potassium okay we can also use this medicine for hyperaldosteronism we use it for acne so sometimes to keep your skin looking nice okay and um we also use it for some people who are going through um, cross-sex hormonal therapy for the men who want to decrease their testosterone and be more feminine, um, you know, if you're a transgender so per person, they might give you this medication to decrease your testosterone so you could be more feminine, okay? Um, so, Adverse effects of this medicine is going to make your potassium level high, so hyperkalemia. Um, and then endocrine-wise, which is responsible for our hormones, it may ca cause gynecomastia in men, which means breast tissue. So the men may have gynecomastia um, and menstrual irregularities in the women. And also in the men, it may cause impotency. And for the women, it may cause hirsutism. Hirsutism is when we get facial hair, okay? And then also deepening of the voice. So basically, it may make the women more masculine and make the men more feminine, okay? So one thing I will say is your potassium is supposed to be high with this medicine. So should you be eating foods high in potassium? You know, your banana, your avocado, your salt substitutes? No, because your potassium is already high. Remember I told you, um, one thing you will learn about me or from the nurse maker is I always tell you life is about balance, meaning you don't want to be too low in something and you don't want to be too high in something so with potassium again the range is 3.5 to 5.0 whether you're too high or too low it will affect your heart so we don't want that to happen we want to kind of keep you in that normal range okay um, avoid salt substitutes when you're taking spironolactone, triamterene, or amyloride because salt substitutes have a lot of potassium in it okay have a lot of potassium in it so you want to avoid it um, if you are taking spironolactone so what does my cartoon say about spironolactone um, water in water out okay save the potassium 
get rid of the water. It blocks the aldosterone in the kidney, gets rid of the sodium and water, but saves the potassium. Okay, watch out for a headache, diarrhea, hyperkalemia, um, electrolyte imbalance, fatigue, and GI disturbance. So you see how this one causes diarrhea, the other ones will cause constipation, but this one doesn't. Remember, too little or too much potassium will cause weakness in your muscles, including the heart. So the heart is an important muscle. So if you have too little or too much, um, it will cause weakness. And like I said, life is all about balance. So we don't want that, right? Okay. So the next diuretic we're going to talk about is osmotic diuretics, um, also known as mannitol. So this diuretic, and like I told you, most time we give you diuretics to get rid of the fluid um, in your body, your hearts, um, your lungs, pul pulmonary edema, congestive heart failure, ascites, your blood pressure. However, this diuretic is not for that. This diuretic is if you have too much pressure in your head, increased intracranial pressure, or if you have too much pressure in your eyes, intraocular pressure. So we give an osmotic diuretic for that. We don't get it, give it for cardiac purposes or to treat high blood pressure. OK, um, we can also give an osmotic diuretic for um, acute renal failure when you are in the acute phase of renal failure to make you make your kidneys start working so you can get rid of the fluid. Because when you're in renal failure, acute renal failure, your kidneys are not working, but we'll give you this medicine to make your kidneys start working to get rid of the fluid in your body. So some things you need to know about the osmotic osmotic diuretic is that um, you have to use a special IV tubing for it. It does have crystal in it, crystallized sometimes when it's, when the temperature is too cold. So you gotta make sure you warm the solution. And if you should see crystals, don't, don't think um, I have to throw this bag away, okay? Because it's given IV only. So don't think to yourself, oh my gosh, there's crystals in this bag. I need to throw it away, it's not good. Um, no, that is perfectly okay. You just need to warm the solution and shake it. And that is all. That is all. Um, because, again, this medicine is given because you have so much pressure in your head, um, like your brain is swollen, cerebral edema. Um, you need to make sure you perform a neural assessment before and after to see if there's any changes. Okay. Um, and check on the patient's level of consciousness if they have any leth um, lethargy, if they're lethargic. Um, so make sure you do that. Adverse effects of this medicine. Again, it can cause edema. Okay, it can cause edema. So that's why we don't want to give it in um, congestive heart failure or heart disease. Okay, the only instances where we give this is for increase uh, ocular pressure or in, um, increase um, cerebral pressure. That's the only reason why we would give this medicine or again for acute renal failure, but we won't give it for um, heart failure or heart disease. And we will avoid it in somebody that has pulmonary edema. So some of the uh, adverse effects that you will see is edema. You may see edema, blurred vision. Patient may have nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, and um, urinary retention. So you have to be careful, even with the patient that has renal failure, when you're given this medicine. It's only acute renal failure, not somebody that has chronic renal failure. So what does my little cartoon say here? Watch for headaches, which is said, um, edema, CHF, fluid and electrolyte imbalances. Okay, we give this for intracranial pressure and intraocular pressure. It's contraindicated, so that means we do not use it, and pulmonary edema. Okay, we also use it for renal disease if you are in acute renal failure, the beginning stages of acute renal failure. 
And so the last um, diuretic that I will talk about, we don't really talk about this one that much. Not like how we just talked about the others, but um, this is a diuretic as well. It's uh, under the classification of carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Um, also goes by the name of acetazolamide. Um, and the brand name is Diamox. So this medicine we commonly give to patients who have glaucoma. Okay, because it decreases intraocular pressure and it can also um, decrease your intracranial pressure. But um, commonly, we give this again um, is at Diamox. Again, for glaucoma, we give this medication. So we give this medicine for glaucoma. We also give it for mountain sickness or altitude sickness. And we can also give this for edema. But it's not usually one of the drugs we treat normally for hyper, we use for hypertension. Again, those are going to be your hydrochlorothiazide, your loop diuretics, your um, case sparing, your aldactone. Those are usually the heavy hitters. And then we have the uh, mannitol for increased ocular pressure, increased um, cranial pressure, and this medicine here, um, acetazolamide for the same. All right, so this was another mini review with the nurse maker talking about uh, diuretics, one of the first line treatments for hypertension, but also for congestive heart failure, pulmonary edema, and other things where we need to diurese you, get that fluid off of you. So remember, because we're getting fluid off of you, make sure you monitor your patient's weight, make sure you monitor your patient's blood pressure, and make sure you monitor your patient's electrolytes, specifically potassium. All right, take care and have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.